everybody, Miss Roberts here for our first day of Thanksgiving on Thursday. Chapter Prologue. One summer day in Frog Creek, Pennsylvania, a mysterious treehouse appeared in the woods. Eight-year-old Jack and his seven-year-old sister Annie climbed into the treehouse. They found it was filled with books. Jack and Annie soon discovered that the treehouse was magic. It could take them to the places in the books. All they had to do was point to a picture and wish to go there. While they are gone, no time at all passes in Frog Creek. Along the way, Jack and Annie discovered that the treehouse belongs to Morgan Le Fay. Morgan is a magical librarian of Camelot, the long ago kingdom of King Arthur. She travels through time and space gathering books. Jack and Annie have many exciting adventures helping Morgan and exploring different times and places. In Magic Treehouse books 25 to 28, they will learn the art of magic. Chapter 1. What Feast? Come on, said Annie. She stood in the doorway to Jack's bedroom. Let's check the woods. But it's Thursday, said Jack. We're going to Grandmother's soon. I know, said Annie, but I, want, I have a feeling the treehouse might be back. I think Morgan might have sent us a new rhyme. Jack trusted Annie's feelings. Okay, but we'll have to be quick, he said. He threw his notebook and pencil into his backpack and followed her downstairs. Be back soon, Jack called to their parents. Very soon, their dad said. Don't forget it's Thursday, said their mom. We're leaving for grandmother's at nine. I know, said Jack. We'll be back in ten minutes, said Annie. They hurried out of their house. They ran across the yard and up the street into the Frog Creek woods. Jack and Annie ran through the light and the shadow until they stopped under the tallest oak. Yay, said Annie. You were right, said Jack. High in the tree was a magic was the magic tree house. Jack grabbed the rope ladder and started up. Annie was right behind him. They climbed into the tree house. Sunlight slanted in through the window. Good, our gift from last time last trip our gifts from last trip <sighs> sorry, it's two plurals and it's just making me slightly confused. Our, good, our gifts from our last trips are still here, said Annie. She pointed to the scroll from, Sh from Shakespeare's theater and the twig from the gorillas. Proof we found magic of the theater and the magic of the animals, said Jack. Look, said Annie. She pointed to the book lying in the corner. A piece of paper was sticking out of it. Jack pulled out the paper. It's from Morgan, he said. He read, Dear Jack and Annie, good luck on your third journey to find a special magic. This rhyme will guide you. To find a special magic, when work and toil are done, gather all together, turn three worlds into one. Thank you, Morgan. So who do we gather with, wondered Jack. Annie held up the book. The painting on the cover showed a basket of corn on a wooden table. The title was, A Feast to Remember. We gather at a feast, she said. She pointed to the cover. I wish we could go there. Hold on, said Jack. What kind of feast? Where? When? But the wind was starting to blow. The treehouse started to spin. Then everything was, oh sorry, it spun faster and faster. Then everything was still. Absolutely still. Chapter 2. Shh! Jack opened his eyes. Bright golden sunlight poured into the treehouse. The air felt crisp and cool. Annie was wearing a long dress a long dress, a white cap, and an apron. Jack wore a jacket with a frilly collar. He wore short pants, long socks, leather shoes, and a hat. His backpack was turned into a leather bag. I like your hat, said Annie. It's funny. Yours too, said Jack. You look like a pilgrim, said Annie. So do you, said Jack. Oh, man, I bet we're in the time of the pilgrims. He and Annie scrambled to the window. The treehouse had landed in a tall oak near the edge of the forest. Red and yellow leaves rattled in the cool breeze. Past the forest was a small village, and past the village was, an, was the ocean. It looks like we're, like where the pilgrims lived, said Jack. He studied it in school. He opened the research book and found a picture of the village by the sea. He read aloud, In 1620, a group of 120, pa oh, sorry, 102 passengers sailed from England to America on a ship called the Mayflower. Many of the people on board wanted freedom of religion. They wanted to worship God in their own way, not in the way of the King of England made them. 
Others wanted to find a new life in a new land. Today, we call all the people who sailed on the Mayflower pilgrims. Yes, said Annie. Jack read on. The pilgrims wanted to settle near New York, but a storm blew their ship north. They landed in a bay on Ma they landed in a bay on the coast of what is now Massachusetts. Six years before Captain John Smith had explored the coast, it had named he had named the bay Plymouth. Plymouth, said Annie. That's where the first Thanksgiving was. Oh, man, Jack smiled. So that's the feast. Wow, said Annie. My class put on a play about the first Thanksgiving. Mine too, said Jack. I played Priscilla, said Annie. I played the turkey, said Jack. Now we'll get to meet the real Priscilla, said Jack. And Squanto. And, and Governor Bradford. And Miles Standwich. Come on. She started down the ladder. Wait, what will we say, said Jack. We'll just tell them hi and stuff, said Annie. Are you nuts, said Jack. He put, on the, he put the book into his bag. They won't understand who we are. We need a plan. He slung the bag over his shoulder and hurried down the ladder after Annie. Listen, we need to, Jack started. I know, a plan, said Annie. But first, let's get closer to the village and watch. Okay, said Jack. But we can't let anyone see us. We have to be careful and quiet. He and Annie started walking carefully through the woods, but they did not walk quietly. The autumn leaves crunched and crackled under their leather shoes. Shh, said Jack. I can't help it, said Annie. You're doing it too. Then he, we have to stop, said Jack. Let's get behind the tree and watch from there. They crunched over to a tree at the edge of the woods. In the distance was a row of small log houses with steep thatched roofs. Jack pulled out the book. He found the part about the village. Then he pushed his glasses up and read to himself. The pilgrims br brought chickens, geese, goats, and sheep from England. They brought seeds to plant, and they knew how to make traps to catch wild animals for food. But they could not have survived without the help of the wam Wampanoag. Wam Wampanoag Indian named Squanto. Squanto taught them how to grow corn. Wampanoag is the tribe of Indians. Hi, you, Annie, Annie whispered. Jack looked up. Annie was w talking to a skinny yellow dog. The dog was sniffing at a tree near them. Don't let him see us, Jack whispered. Why, said Annie. The dog looked at them and barked. That's why, said Jack. The skinny dog barked again and again. Two pilgrim men ran from the, the other side of the houses. Then more pilgrims appeared. They all looked in the direction of the barking dog. Oh no, said Jack. Let's go back. We don't have a plan yet. He packed up his book and started away from the tree. Suddenly, something tightened around his ankle. A tree branch snapped. Ah, Jack shouted as he was jerked up into the air. I think he might have fallen into one of those traps they were talking about. But we will have to find out what happens next tomorrow because that's the end of chapter two. I hope you are having a wonderful Monday and I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.